What's up friends, Dan Vega here, Spring Developer Advocate at VMware. Today we're gonna to take a look at Spring Boot 3.2 and the new REST client. Before we do so though, I thought it'd be a good chance to take a look at how we got here. First, we can start with the term client. A client is just a way to call it to another service in our organization or say a public API. So traditionally in Spring, we've had many implementations of clients and we'll talk about a few of them today. If you're building out a Spring MVC app, a blocking application, you traditionally reach for something like the REST template. The REST template is great. It gives us a whole bunch of overloaded methods and the ability to construct a service to call to another service. Now, the problem with that is there's a lot of overloaded methods, so it can be confusing on what is the appropriate method to use for the situation that you're in. I also think some of the confusion that came along with REST template is that it was feature complete. If you Look at the documentation, it says this is feature complete. And I think a lot of folks took that as deprecated. It's not been deprecated. And up until Spring Boot 3.0, I would traditionally tell folks to go ahead and use the REST template. It was great for for making service calls in a Spring MVC application. Next came the web client. So in the Spring, in the reactive world using Spring WebFlux, uh, we needed a new client there. And this client was took a lot of the things that were learned from the REST template and improved upon them, uh, mainly providing this nice fluent API. So you had this really nice way of declaring a service to service communication and the web client was great. Uh, it was so great that we started using it in our Spring MVC application because there's a way to, uh, basically say, hey, block this operation because by default, the web client is asynchronous. So that's great, but now we're bringing in this extra dependency into our MVC applications uh, just to make a client call, right? So now comes along the REST template, taking a lot of what we've learned from the web client and kind of bringing it back to Spring MVC. So the REST client is gonna have a similar fluent API, but we can use it in our MVC apps with having, without having to bring in that external dependency. So kind of the best of both worlds. Well, What's also really interesting is the support for HTTP interfaces that came in Spring Boot 3 and Spring Framework 6. This will also support that. So no longer do you need to bring in Spring WebFlux to use HTTP interfaces. If you're in an MVC application, it will use the REST client underneath the hood. Also with Spring Boot 3.2 comes the auto configuration for the REST client. So you'll have, an, you'll have access to that in all of your classes. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna build out a very simple application, but we'll build out a CRUD service that uses the REST client to make a call to a public API. So I think this will be a lot of fun. I'm really excited about the REST client and I hope after this video, you are too. Uh, so what are we waiting for? Let's head over to start.spring.io and create a new application. All right, so here we are at start.spring.io. I'm going to choose a project type of Maven. I'm using Java. The version of Spring Boot that I'm gonna use is 3.2.0 milestone two. Obviously, if you're watching this in the future, use whatever milestone release of 3.2 there is, or if you're on 3, if 3.2 is publicly available, then obviously go ahead and use that. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a group name of dev.danvega, and let's go ahead and call this the REST client client demo. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna pick out our Spring Web for this. This will bring in the bits that we need. Auto configuration is there. We'll be able to get access to the REST client in say a service, for, service class. Uh, so everything we need is there to build this out. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and generate our application. This will download a zip file. You can open it up in whatever IDE or text editor you're most productive in. I'll go ahead and open it up in IntelliJ Ultimate Edition. And with that, Let's go ahead and write some code. All right, so we're gonna create an application that calls out to this public service called JSON Placeholder. If you've been following the channel, I've used it before. If you have not, go ahead and take a look at it. Just a nice API that we can use for free without any kind of authorization. Great to kind of test things out. I'm going to use the posts and that is why I'm going to model a system around this post which has a user ID and ID title and body. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here in my application, I'm going to create a new package. I'm gonna call this post. Inside of post, I'm going to create a new Java record. We'll call this post, and this will be a record. So we, of course, we want to model it after that post that we just saw. So I'm gonna have an integer ID, an integer user ID, and a uh, string title and a string body. Thank you, Copilot, for finishing this off for me. So now I have a record um, that I can use to kind of model a post in my application. I'm gonna start with a post controller. So let's say new Java class, 
post controller. We'll create this as a class. This will be a REST controller with a request mapping of slash API slash posts. Now what I need to do is I need to create a method to find all the posts in my system. So I'll create a get mapping. I will say that this is going to return a list of posts and we'll call this find all. Right now this is going to return null. What I want to do though is I want to delegate to some type of service to do this, right? I could just inject a REST client here and go ahead and talk to um, the JSON placeholder service here in my controller. But what happens if I need to do something similar in another class somewhere else in my system? That is why I want to kind of break this out and keep this separated. And again, controllers are meant to be dumb. They take in requests, they delegate to something else, and they return responses. So what I want to do is say private final post service and post service, and we'll get this through a constructor injection. But we don't have this yet, so we need to go ahead and create this. So I'm going to create this class in my post package. We'll call this a post service. I'm sorry, uh, service. And that is good. Now we can go ahead and say, give me an instance of this through constructor injection. So what I want to do now is say post service dot find all. That's how I'm going to get those back. I'll go ahead and create that method in here and we are off and running. So now the question is, how can we implement this? So we are going to take advantage of the new REST client in Spring Boot 3.2. All right, so I'm going to create a variable here called REST of type REST client, called REST client. And I'm going to create a constructor here. We'll call this post service. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you Copilot for that suggestion. That's exactly what I want to do. So I'm using the REST client's builder method to go ahead and build this out. I'm going to pass in a base URL. This is the service that I'm going to call. And we call dot build and that will return a REST client. So now we have a REST client that we can use. Let's go ahead and use it. So in my find all method, I need a way to go ahead and get all of the posts in the system. So what we can do is we can say rest client .get. So there are different methods on here. Uh, so for put, get, post, delete, etc. So I'm going to call get. And from get, I'm going to say here's the URI. So we have the base URL. What's the URI that we're calling? In this case, it's going to be slash posts. And what is posts going to do? We want to go ahead and retrieve that. That will, let's go ahead and take a look at that method and download those sources. What does retrieve do? Retrieve, where did we go? There we go. So um, this is proceed to declare how to extract the response. For example, to extract a response entity with a status, headers, and body, you can say, oh, go ahead and retrieve this and take it to or turn it into an entity of type person class. Or if you're only interested in the body, you could say, hey, retrieve, just give me the body and turn that into a person class. Um, there's some more information on it here. So that's exactly what we want to do. We want to retrieve it. And all we really care about here is turning this into a body, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get back a list. So I can't just say, give me a post. I'm going to say a new parameter to parameterized type reference. And um, that looks good. So parameter type, type reference, list of posts. Yep. And that should be that. So there it is. We have written out a easy client to contact a public API. We we're saying, hey, here's the base URL. Here's the URI. Go ahead and retrieve it. Turn it into a body. In this case, a list of posts. So that should work. Um, let's go ahead and see if that will work. So I'm going to go to my application here. I'm going to run this. And if all starts up fine, which it does, we can head over to the browser uh, or we can go in our terminal here and just test this out. And I can say I'm going to use HTTP, so HTTP um, 8080 slash API slash posts. And that will go out, use the JSON placeholder service um, to get those 100 posts. So, so far, so good. We were able to implement a simple method, uh, the find all method. Let's keep this rolling. 
Okay, next I need a way to get a single post. So how can I do that? I'm going to use a git mapping here and I'm going to use a um, dynamic placeholder here that we can pull out using the path variable. And I'll say, hey, this is gonna return a post. Let's say find by D using the path variable, uh, which is an integer. And we need to create a method in our post service called find by ID. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and implement it. So how do we do that? We're gonna return whatever the REST client is. And let's see what Copilot's coming up with. Yes, that looks pretty good. So we're going to get, we're gonna call the URI slash posts and now slash ID. And this is going to pass in the ID as the parameter. We're gonna retrieve that. And now this time, all we gotta do is call body and say, uh, go ahead and turn that into a post. So let's rerun that again, head back over to our terminal. And in this case, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm gonna say slash two. And there we go, we get our single post. So, so far, so good. Again, I, I think um, if you're watching this and you're looking at the code, I hope what's being conveyed here is just the simplicity here of the REST client. It's a nice fluent API. It's also very simple to kind of look at this, read this and understand what's going on, even if you've never used it. So let's keep this ball rolling. We need to go ahead and implement a few more methods. I'm going to just post it or copy paste here, copy pasta as they say, and what we're gonna do is implement each of these. So we need a way to create a new post, we need a way to update a new post, and we need a new, a new a way to delete a new post. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'll just go ahead and come over here. And let's go ahead and start with the post. So I'm going to say, uh, we're gonna return a post and this is gonna be called create. This is going to take in a post. And how do we make this happen? So we say, we're gonna use the rest client, uh, but we're gonna call post on this. And what is the URI? The URI is going to be slash posts, the body, uh, and actually before the body comes into play, I just wanna make sure we set the content type. So we can say uh, media type application JSON. The body is going to be the post that we have here. So that is getting set to the body. Once that is set, um, now we're sending that over. Now we wanna retrieve the response. Um, we're gonna retrieve that and turn that into just a post. So in this case, we're actually setting the user ID and everything, but you know, in a system where you might just set the title and body and the system, the database creates like the ID for the unique, unique identifier. In that case, you might wanna get back to post so you understand like, hey, what is the new ID of that post? Um, but that's okay. So um, for an uh, update, uh, something similar here, we're taking in an integer ID, a post. Uh, what we're gonna do is use the URI posts and ID, set the media type, here's the body, retrieve it, come back as a post. Uh, finally, delete, we'll take in an integer ID. We're gonna have a REST client called delete, so this is a new one. We're using the URI, retrieve, and then this is the new one that I wanted to point out. In this case, we don't want a body, so we can just say to bodiless entity, and this returns a response entity without a body. Um, so that's a nice in this situation. So there are all of our methods. Um, I want a quick way to kind of test all of these. Um, and I'm not writing tests for this one. Uh, here in IntelliJ, I'm just going to use the uh, HTTP client. So I'm gonna say post.http, and this will be in the GitHub repository that is in the description below. And now I can just say, here's a bunch of um, kind of manual tests that I wanna run. I wanna be able to list my posts. I wanna be able to get a post. I wanna create a post, update, and delete. If I go ahead and run all these, those should work and we know that our application is working. Okay, so this is great. Uh, I wanted to show this off, just how easy it is to use the REST client, but we've, again, written all of these connections to a service by hand. We've manually had to implement all of these methods. So we know that in Spring Boot 3.0, there is the new HTTP interfaces. So can we take advantage of that in our Spring Boot 3.2 app with the REST client? And you already know this, if you've been watching the whole video, the answer is yes. So what I wanna do now is I'm going to create a new Java class. This is going to be an interface. We'll call this the JSON placeholder service. And again, this is an interface. 
And I'm going to copy pasta some code here just to get us going. And what we can do here is we can say, here are all the methods that I want you to implement. So we're still going to use the base URL. We'll set that up in a second. But all we're defining in the HTTP interface are the contracts. Here is what I want you to do. I want you to call the base method plus slash posts. And I want you to return to me a list of posts. What Spring will do is turn this interface into an implementation at runtime and put all of that work together for you. So all we're doing is declaring the methods. This is nothing new. We've been able to do this in Spring Boot 3.0. I have videos on this. Uh, go ahead and check the description below for those. Uh, you can learn more about this there. What's new here is that before we had to bring in Spring WebFlux because we needed the web client to make this work. And the web client could then choose by the return type whether this was going to be synchronous or asynchronous. We are in a Spring MVC app. This is blocking. So we can now use the REST client underneath the hood as part of the HTTP interfaces. So no longer do we have to bring in that extra dependency into our palm.xml. So I have this interface. Uh, what do I need to kind of make this happen? Well, I need to set up a little bit of boilerplate, uh, create any bean for this. So I'll go into my application. I'll come in here and we'll set this up, this JSON placeholder service. So now I can create a REST client. I'm saying, hey, here's a REST client. Here's the base URL. Remember, that's the base for the JSON placeholder service. And I need to create an HTTP service proxy factory. You could do this before. Now there's a REST client adapter. So when we call Builder 4, we can pass in the REST client adapter. We create it from our client. We build that. We pass it in. Now we have the JSON placeholder service. So what's interesting here now is I can come in my post controller, and I can basically just change this type, right? JSON placeholder service, and I can say that we need to get a JSON placeholder service. I'm going to call it the same just so that I don't have to change any of my code. But if I come back into my post.http and go ahead and run this, uh, actually, I didn't restart my application. Let me do that just so we can see that. And then here I'm going to run this, and all things should just run the same. So yeah, that's it. That's what I wanted to show off, the new REST client. It's a lot easier to use, in, in my opinion, than something like REST template. It's got a nice fluent API. It's readable. Uh, we can use it with HTTP interfaces underneath the hood. Just a huge win-win. Uh, I love this addition to Spring Boot 3.2, um, which will be coming out later this year. If you're watching this right away, that is slated for later this year. Again, you can use the milestones now to go ahead and test it out. But I'm excited about this change, and I would love to hear from you. Are you excited about the new REST client? Uh, have you started playing around with it? Let me know in the comments below. If you found value in this, friends, you know the deal by now. Please do me a big favor. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. And as always, happy coding, friends.